Hi all and welcome to a new Generative Component series. In this series, we will be creating a dynamic facade panel that will react to the position of a focus point. Inspiration for this series was the facade panels on the famous Singapore building, Esplanade, Theatres on the Bay, by DP Architects and Michael Wilford and Partners. We will use a simple arc surface to generate the polygons and panels and measure the angles between the polygons and a focus point to drive the heights of the sun hoods. So in part one, we'll look at the polygon array direction. We're going to place some coordinate systems. We're going to place some base points that can be used to measure angles. Then we're going to measure those angles and we're going to set up some number of arrays. In part two, we're going to start creating a custom facade panel. We'll create a base polygon. We'll create some variables. We'll create some coordinate systems based on the panel. We'll generate facade frames and facade glass. In part three, we'll continue creating a custom facade panel. So we'll place some cells. We'll generate some framing for the sun hood. We'll generate the sun hood itself and then create a GNT of the final result. In part four, we're going to bring it all together. We're going to place the generated node type on the sample roof, test its dynamics, then we're going to look at the summary discussing how to push this model further. So let's get started. So here we are in our sample file and as you can see here I've just got a simple arc uh, roof structure that I've divided up into polygons. And as you can see it starts at the bottom with polygon 00, zero through to polygon 03 and then at the top it's polygon 90 through to 93 so we've got an array of polygons and I've color coded this polygon just as sample polygons down here so first of all I'm going to place a coordinate system just to check the direction of these polygons so let's rename this to panel CS and I'm going to change the method to from node so we link that to the polygons and we can see our Z direction is actually pointing inside the model so what I'm going to do is just place a polygon node and select the method reverse polygon. If we link that up, that'll reverse our polygon direction for us. So let's rename this to sample polygons reverse and we'll just change the coordinate system to sample polygons reverse. So now we can see the Z direction pointing out for the building. So now let's place a point in the center of each of our polygons because we want to measure the angle from the center of our polygons. So I'm going to rename this to call it panel center point and I want the method for this to be at the centroid of set. And within this we can actually target the sample polygon so I'm going to type in sample polygons and then reverse and then put dot vertices and so that'll select all the vertices of each polygon and create a center point in the middle of those and now what I want to do is actually want to measure the angle down the polygon so from the center of the polygon to the bottom line so I'm going to place a new point let's call this panel bottom center because we want to put it on the bottom uh, sort of chord of this polygon what I'm actually going to do is write this as a function so we open up our function editor and I type in the word function and open brackets and what we want to set up is our inputs so we type in polygon and then I'm going to call it input poly and then we close brackets and then we open up our function with open and close curly brackets so there's the first part of our function I'm going to set up what I want as an output so I want a point and I'm going to call that my point array because it's going to be an array of points and I equal that to just an empty container so the next line we actually want to do is actually dive into the rows of each polygon so we set up a for loop and it's going to be based on the polygon count. So once we set up the first uh, for statement, inside this statement we want to set up what we want to gather out of this. So we want to gather a list of uh, points. So the first is point my point list equals uh, container. And then we want to start the loop to go through each of the columns of this row. So we set up a J loop. And for this J loop, we can base it on the input poly again. And this time it's input poly, but then open square brackets, close square brackets with I in the middle. So now we want to use the I's as our count. So now we just go point, my point, and now we want to create this point. So this point, we can actually start by typing in my point, then equals new point, and then open close brackets, and then dot. And now it gives you a method for creating this point. So we want to create this point by a parameter along curve. So we select that from the list and we open our brackets and it gives us our methods of how to how to do this. So what we want to target is the input poly. So if we type input poly and we can actually do I and J because we want to do the actual poly we're looking at, just one polygon. And so we're going to use the control polygon 
And then we're going to do the actual target the line segments within that control polygon. Because the polygon is actually made up of four lines. So we want the line segments. And I'm actually going to target, say, one. I'm not entirely sure which one is first, but I think it might be one. So, and then put comma, and then we're how far along that line. So we're going to go half. We want to be in the middle of that line. The next line we want to start to do is actually gather our point list along. So we want to go point list dot add, and we want to add my point into that list. So we just do my point list dot add, and then in brackets put my point. Now we want to do is actually create the array. So now what we're going to do is copy the array and place it down here and do the same thing. Say my point array dot add and then add the list to the array. And as we go along, the inner sort of loop creates the list and the outer loop creates the array. And then finally, we want to copy that my point array and we just type in return and put in my poly array. And that's what it's going to return to us at the end. So once we hit apply, then you can see all we have is this the input poly. So we just target the, the input polys we want and we can see it creates an array of points. So that's perfect. Problem is it's actually on the top. We don't actually want it on the top, we want it on the bottom. So I'm just going to change the number one to number three. So it'll target line segment three and you see it moves to the bottom. So that's perfect. So we're going to measure the, uh, the first part of our measurement angle is going to be between the center point and the bottom point of the polygon. So that gives us sort of one line or one angle, part of that angle. So next I want to place obviously the point we want to measure. So I'm just going to place a point out here in space, which could be a target we want to look at, a view or some sort of target point we want to have out in space. And so I'm going to just rename this as well, and I'll call this target point. So now we have pretty much our setup for measuring our angles between the polygon and this point out in space. So I'm going to colorize this node as well, and colorize those two nodes that we're sort of going to use as our, our inputs, I suppose. So I might color these to be orange, just so we can identify that they're the two that we're actually going to target later on. That's going to be our inputs for our uh, generated node type in the future. So now we need to work out what the angle is between the polygon itself and that point. And for this, one option would be to go to the functions tab and actually use the angle function. Unfortunately, the angle function doesn't measure between zero and 360, it measures between 180 and then it flips once it goes to the other side of 180 again. So Volker actually provided us a nice script in one of uh, the GC SIGs. And so what I'm gonna do is actually modify that slightly in here and actually use it in, in my array. So I created a function for this. So first of all, this function defines a point, so the origin for the angle. So that'll be our center point of our panels. The next it asks for is the DGN origin point. So basically this will be our base CS. Then it has point one, which is gonna be the point on the baseline of our polygon. Point two, which is the point we're looking towards. And then we're going to look at a up vector. So which way do we want it to be angled? What we end up doing is actually measuring this in the XY plane. So what we end up doing is creating a new coordinate system on the panel and then we end up transposing the points down to the base CS so we can measure whether the angle is in the positive or negative direction of Y. So we continue through the script. We basically just set up two loops as we did in the last exercise, uh, an I and J loop so we can actually target the rows and the columns. Within the J loop we actually place a new coordinate system by origin, primary and secondary direction and the inputs for that are basically the center point of our polygon the point on the base of the polygon that we just created. We have an uh, up vector. So we use the coordinate system that created on each point as the up, and then what plane it's actually in. So first of all, what I also did was actually created a point because our free point in space could be related either in say either Z direction or in X and Y. So what I actually do is I actually transpose the, the point two over to the XY plane of the coordinate system we're looking at at the moment, or the coordinate system for this panel that we just set up. And what this does is then just focuses on the Z value of the focus point. So by transposing it across to the XY, we just get to focus on that one plane. So once we have that point, then we just create two new viewpoints and transpose them over to the base CS. Then we actually measure the angle between that. And then we look at whether the point two is actually above or below the Y axis. This will determine whether it needs to be minus from 360 or not. So give us a value between zero and 360. So with that applied, we can actually link up the inputs. So we've got our base point, which is actually gonna be our panel center point. We've got the DGN origin, which is actually gonna be our base CS. We've got point one, which is actually gonna be our bottom panel centers. We've got point two, which is our focus point. And the final one is the up vector 
which I'm going to use the coordinate system to be set up at the beginning. So once we link that up, we get an array of polygon angles. And if we just go to the left view to demonstrate how that works, if we grab the move command and we actually move that point down, you actually see they're updating, it's a bit slow, it's updating on uh, dynamically as we move the panel, the point up and down. We can see as we get lower to the ground, we're actually getting some panels down the bottom that actually are just tipping over the 360 degrees. So there's panels at the back where they're actually in a negative, sort of below the, the angle. And similarly, if we move it uh, up in the air, we're actually getting all the panels in the positive. So to make it really easier, I can just type in some numbers here as well. So if I just say Z minus 5,000, we would see we get virtually, we get some in the low numbers. And then as we get down to the bottom, we're actually getting into the negatives. So let's just reset this to say 5,000 uh, as a starting point. And now we can start to set up our height parameters for what our sun hoods might be. So to set up some values for our sun hood heights, I dragged in a function call. And let's call this, let's call this height of hood. Let's write a function for this. So if you know a function dialog, and I'll just paste in a function. So the function's fairly simple. So what it does is it sets up a double. So first of all, we're going to, we want to input a double and actually put in two open and close square brackets. This indicates that we're going to input a, an array of doubles. So, and I call that view angle. So then I set up two other doubles. So one double being the minimum height, hood height and the maximum hood height. So I want to set up some variables for what that might be. So similar to the other exercises, we set up the, what we want is the output. So we have a double and then hood height value array. So we're going to be an array of, of doubles. Then we start our first for loop, which is going to be based on the view angle count. So that all of the angles that we actually input, we set up our list variable, then we jump into the J loop. So within the J loop, we actually do all the power of this function. So first we set up the double for the hood height value, just the value is the default value we're going to have for this. So I'm going to set it to 300. Then we set up three if statements. So the first is if the view angle IJ, so the one we're looking at, is it if it's greater or equal to zero, and also if the view angle is less than 80, then we want to set up a factor. And so this is how I'm going to actually factor in the angles versus what the maximum or minimum height we want to do. So first of all, I set up maximum height minus minimum height. So that gives us the range that we have. And I divide that by 80. So 80 degrees is, is the value range we want to use. And so once we've got that value, then we can actually say the hood height value equals the factor that we just set up times the view angle that we just input and then we add the minimum height to it. So this will give us a hood height value that ranges somewhere between the minimum hood height and the maximum hood height, depending on whether you're between zero and 80 degrees. The other if else statements just set up what happens if you're outside this zero to 80 degrees. So the next one is if i and j is greater than 80, but less than 180, then we want it to be at the maximum height. And then if the point itself is in the other zone, so if it's greater than 180, but less than 360, then we just want to apply the minimum hood height. So then all we do is just grab all those values and put them in the list as we've done before. And then we, as we go into the back into the I loop, then we add the list into the array and then we just return the array. So once we hit apply, then we've just got three inputs. So let's just type in a minimum hood height of say 300 and a maximum hood height of, let's set this to say 1500. And all we need to do is link up the view angle to our angles. And you can see there they are. So we have numbers somewhere between 300 and 1500. And it's related to the actual angles themselves. So now we've got our sort of dynamic uh, hood height. So now we can actually start creating a custom facade panel where we can just feed in these array values. And as we move the point around, it'll change the heights of the hoods. So as a last bit of cleanup, what I might do is just uh, highlight some of the points and just make them invisible because we don't need to see these anymore so it'll be clearer when we come back and place our panel later on. So that ends this part of the series so stay tuned and the next part we'll start creating a custom facade panel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.